Second key rock in the midst of being a, a lover of God and trusting God is the Word of God. Isaiah 40, verse 8, The grass wither, the flower fades, but the Word of our God stands forever. Woo! <laughs> you know what? This thing is marching through history. It's just, it's not going to change. It becomes a rock, a place of substance. Whatever your need is, man, I need to know about fear. You can Google, you can look in the back of the concordance, and you can just meditate on it and just ask yourself, what is God saying in this passage of Scripture? Now, how do I obey that? And obedience is not like some heavy deal. How do I respond? At the very least, I can pray it back to God. Let me just give you a great one. God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. I can say, God, what are you saying about this through this scripture? He's saying, that fear you're experiencing is not from me. Great start. And in place of that fear you're feeling, I'm giving you love, power, and a sound mind if you'll choose it right now. So what I do is I take the word of God and I say, God didn't give me a spirit of fear according to your word, but love, power, and a sound mind. Now my obedience is out to declare it. So I can create, I declare love in the face of my fear for my loved ones. God, you are able because you are loving. I declare power of God for restoration and healing and wisdom and counsel. I declare a sound mind. Lord, my mind's freaking out. My whole family doesn't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And we're all worked up and we say, peace, be still, because the word of God says there's love, power, and a sound mind coming my way. And I want you to know this is not a pep rally. This is an admonition for you to rely on stuff that is unshakable and immovable through the ages. My exhortations are not going to carry you, but the word of God will. That's right. First Peter 5, 6 through 11. I got to slow this down because you're just going to get blessed, right? First Peter 5, 6 through 11. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. The mighty hand. There it is. 2020. The hand of God. The year of the hand. The hand that reaches down to us, the hand that we reach up with, and the hand that reaches out. There's a mighty hand of God. Yes. Woo! This is not a little hand of God. This is the mighty hand of God that holds the mountains in a balance, that weighs the seas in His hands. The mighty hand of God. I humble myself under the mighty hand of God. Hey, yesterday I was a little overwhelmed by about a thousand different things going on. My phone's blowing up. I've got, we, we work around the world. I've got all these questions and concerns and I'm feeling a need to be perfect and to be, do everything right. And I, I'm just, I'm feeling tightness in my chest and all this stuff. And I said, I just got to go for a run. And, I, and as I was running, I'm just praying and I'm not finding the peace. So I said, well, I got to keep on praying. And I prayed until I got there. There is when my hands and my life are in the Prince of Peace. When I'm in His arms and I've, I've prayed it through, I've content, I've given everything I know over and over and over again. I've worshipped, I've prayed, I've communicated the Word. There is that peace that passes all understanding. And I just want you to know there's many times that I can't get there on my own. That's why I ask people pray for me every day, all day. I need you. And you know what? We need each other.